So what's the best Roku to buy this year? Well, today I'm gonna help you figure it out. I'll be covering all your choices from the Roku Ultra to the least expensive model, the Roku Express. And I'm gonna be talking about the new Voice Remote Pro that you can buy as a replacement remote. And that's also included in two of the Roku models covered today. Hi, I'm Jim Kimball, editor of cordcuttingreport.com, where TV viewers come to get the most out of their streaming services and hardware. Let's jump right in with what I think is the best Roku for your money right now. That's the Roku Express 4K Plus. The Roku Express 4K Plus is priced usually around $40. It's small and compact. It fits right under your television and it supports 4K and HDR. The software is generally the same across the board with Roku and Roku TVs. So the Express 4K Plus is the best Roku for an older smart TV, especially one that supports 4K that needs a refresh. But even if you're looking to add some new life into an older 1080p television, I still think the Express 4K Plus is a better buy for a couple of reasons. It has a better remote control that includes voice search, a power button for your TV, and a volume rocker. So essentially you're getting a universal remote that you can pair with just about any TV. Getting a 4K capable Roku is also a good idea because even if you're using a TV that only has high definition picture resolution, chances are your next TV is going to be capable of 4K. I think it's always a good idea to future proof whatever streaming device you're going to buy. The Express 4K Plus has dual band connectivity over Wi-Fi. The private listening feature is not on the Express 4K Plus. But if you use the mobile app on Roku, you can connect with some Bluetooth headphones and use it that way. The Express 4K Plus also supports Apple AirPlay and HomeKit. So if you want to stream some photos or videos from your iPhone or another Apple device to your Roku, you can do that. The Express 4K Plus does not support Dolby Atmos or Dolby Vision picture resolution, but I think that's kind of a minor issue considering the price point. The Roku Express is the entry-level budget model that has HD picture resolution and is priced at about $30. As I just mentioned, the picture resolution is high definition, so that's 1080p or 720p, so it's suitable for an older TV that has an HDMI port in the back, the remote control with the Roku Express has no voice commands, no power button for the TV or volume control. So it's a very bare bones model, but still you can stream any streaming service that you typically would with a more expensive Roku or a Roku TV. In the box, you get all the cords you need and a very good remote control. So when you get it, you can just take it out of the box, plug it in, and start streaming pretty much right away. Also now with the Roku channel, you're essentially getting a free ad supported streaming service that has lots of movies and even Roku originals to watch. So right out of the box, you're getting a lot of free programming. The Roku Ultra is the company's flagship streaming player, usually retails for about $99. It supports all available picture formats, including 4K HDR10, Dolby Vision. On the audio side, it supports Dolby Atmos. The latest refresh of this model includes the Voice Remote Pro, which I'll get into a little bit later in the video. Like with all other Roku models, all your cords that you need are included in the box, including the charger for the Voice Remote Pro. To me, one of the most underrated perks of the Roku Ultra is the ethernet port in the back. Having a hardwired internet connection instead of using Wi-Fi can greatly reduce the chance of picture buffering. That's something you really wanna consider if you're using an older router or you're streaming in these higher picture resolutions like Dolby Vision that require more bandwidth. The remote control controls TV power, volume. The Ultra also supports Apple AirPlay and HomeKit, so you can easily share photos and videos from your iPhone. 
So the Roku Ultra is what I bought my parents when they were ready to cut the cord. And one of the reasons why is because they had an older 55 inch television in their living room. And even though it was 1080p, I wanted to give them a Roku that was gonna support their next TV, which I figured would be in 4K. And I really wanted to hardwire their Roku box. That way I knew they wouldn't have any Wi-Fi issues with their older router that they were using. Roku still has a couple of streaming sticks in their lineup. One is called Roku Streaming Stick 4K. The other one's called Roku Streaming Stick 4K Plus. The 4K Streaming Stick 4K is a follow-up to the Streaming Stick Plus, which debuted in 2017. Streaming Stick 4K supports Dolby Vision, HDR, 4K, and Dolby Atmos. Roku says that it also has longer range Wi-Fi capabilities. I haven't personally tested that out. The Streaming Stick 4K retails for about $50. The Streaming Stick 4K Plus supports all the same picture resolutions, but the difference is you get the Voice Remote Pro included in the box. So just to quickly recap, I think the top two Roku devices in my mind is the Express 4K Plus because it just gives you a lot of value for the money, especially with that remote control that has voice commands and control over your television. And I like the Roku Ultra a lot. I think that's great for a living room TV and the ability to hardwire your Roku box can really ensure you have a solid internet connection. One other thing I almost forgot to mention about the Roku Ultra is that it has a USB port and if you wanted to access your media, whether it's on a flash drive or external hard drive, you can plug it right in and go to the Roku media player icon and access both photo and video files. By the way, if you like these kinds of hands-on reviews or how-to videos, I hope you'll click the like and subscribe button and help me grow this channel. So let's get into the Roku Voice Remote Pro. It was released earlier this year. The Remote Pro has a rechargeable battery and a lost remote control finder feature that is super useful. The button layout looks pretty much the same as other Roku remotes. You have the volume rocker on the side, a mute button, TV power button up top, navigation button in the middle, voice search button right below that, the dimensions of the remote feel slightly thinner and smaller than the older Roku remotes that I have. Now, as I mentioned, the Voice Remote Pro is included with two models. That's the Roku Ultra and the Roku Streaming Stick 4K Plus, but you can buy this separately and it will pair with most Roku players and Roku TVs. So probably the biggest difference with the Voice Remote Pro is that you don't need batteries anymore. If you want to recharge it, there's a little charging port on the bottom. There's a USB cord that comes with the remote. There's a little green light on the bottom of the remote control. When it's charged up, it becomes a solid green. The other big change is this remote has hands-free voice commands. So you don't need to press the microphone button all the time to issue voice commands. You can initiate voice commands by saying, hey Roku. So you can say, hey Roku, find my remote control. So if the remote is lost in the couch cushion somewhere, the remote will give off this loud unbroken beep that won't shut off until you pick up the remote and just press any button. There's some other premium features such as private listening and there's two programmable shortcut buttons. So if you're a fan of a streaming service that isn't featured on one of the four down below, you can program that in one of these two buttons. There's one button on this that I noticed while I was using it. There's a switch on the side of the remote control where you can turn off hands-free voice commands. And I imagine this is for people who don't feel so comfortable with having uh, an always-on microphone in their house. The problem is if you shut this off and you lose the remote, you can't turn around and say, hey Roku, where's my remote? Because you've basically shut off that feature. So thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope I gave you some clarity on which Roku device might be the best one for you. Of course, you can always leave me questions in the comments below. I do my best to answer as many as I can. I've also written a comprehensive guide on the cord cutting report website on the best Roku models to buy. 
I hope you go check that out. If you're interested in other hands-on reviews like this one, not only can you subscribe to the YouTube channel, but you can also follow the website on Google News. I'm starting to establish a pretty good following there, and I hope you'll join us. You can also sign up for my monthly newsletter where I cover a lot of new products and services. So thanks again, and I'll see you next time.